Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Moments Podcast. I am doing my best to get these podcasts like weeks ahead because I've noticed now that I've been in this little podcast world for a while that most people who have a podcast have their podcast like pre prepared for months in advance and I'm sitting here recording like Friday when the podcast episode comes out on Monday and it honestly gets to be really overwhelming for me because sometimes I'm just not in the mood to record and like it's nothing against you guys you're my best friends but like sometimes my words actually don't work and that happens even sometimes when I do record so you can imagine if I'm not in the headspace to record that it's just a disaster like it's a complete disaster but I'm recording this on a Tuesday so let's go we're making progress and hopefully I'm going to record an episode maybe with Anna tomorrow and maybe one with Lisette so that I can be like three episodes ahead. These are all, this is all the goal. Um, also, I'm going to say this in the beginning of the episode because sometimes I'll say it at the end and I don't know that everyone makes it to the end, but if you're listening right now, please DM me who you want to see on the podcast. Like literally anyone that you follow or any doctor or type of professional, whoever you want to see on the podcast or listen to on the podcast, please share it with me because 2023, we're actually going to do all the things I've been talking about and thinking about. I just got new microphones and I have two of them, which means I can have guests. And another huge goal of mine for this year is to get a studio space for the podcast. So have a, I don't know, an office for moments. I just think that would be so cool and professional. And I also think it'll just help me keep my head screwed on straight and be able to separate myself from my work because right now, I'm recording in my house and my house isn't really supposed to feel like work. I don't know how to explain it. It always feels like work though because I'm filming in here too. Moving on. I just think it would be really cool and I want to set up a little photo studio in there too just because it's fun and I love taking pictures and I don't know. I'm looking forward to it but I kind of wanted to do this episode. I don't really know what I'm going to title it yet but I want the main topic here to be about finding peace within yourself. And this is another episode, I don't have an outline, I don't have anything written down. It's just been so heavy on my mind and so relevant in my life that I think it would be cool to talk about it. And when I posted a TikTok kind of touching on the topic, a bunch of the comments were like, you should do a podcast episode on this, please do a pod on this. I'm like, I got you guys. And then I also got a couple requests for doing the breaking your own heart one. And I'll get to that one soon. But right now, finding peace within myself is a lot easier for me to talk about just because I've felt it a lot and it's a really cool feeling. Um, If you don't know, which you probably do if you're listening to this episode or this podcast in general, the past few months of my life, I've kind of been searching for myself. I felt a little bit lost and not in anything specific. Like it's not like I was sad or depressed or going through it. I just, just was kind of struggling to feel like me and it was a weird feeling in a weird adjustment and I didn't know what to do about it. I was trying everything to fulfill myself, to find my passion again, to find my sparkle. And I was just doing all the things that, I don't know, other people told me were going to make me feel better or that I thought would make me feel better or that made me seem like I was better. Um, That's a huge one too. Like a lot of the things I was doing when I was quote unquote trying to find myself were like things to make it seem like I knew myself, if that makes any sense. I hope it does. But I kind of learned in the past couple weeks that it has nothing to do with that. You can do all the things that people tell you to do and you can do make yourself look as put together as you want to seem. But if you're not healing yourself from the inside out, you're never going to feel that fulfillment and you're never going to get that sparkle back and you're never just going to feel the peace in your life. And I don't know. I think you guys do a really good job at telling like what state I am at emotionally through like my TikToks and stuff. And I just noticed this recently because... Like I said, the past few weeks, I genuinely have been feeling like my sparkle and I've been feeling peaceful and I've been feeling really, really happy and productive and excited for the future, which is something that I've been forcing myself to feel. But in the last couple of weeks, I'm not forcing it. It's just there. It's real. Like my ideas are coming to fruition and I don't really know. I just feel really good. And I guess that it's shown through in my content, in my videos, in my talking, in my words. I don't know what it is because all the comments on my TikTok are like, oh my God, Alexis is out. And I also am just going to touch on this really quickly in case you miss. I only posted about one TikTok talking about this, but I have two versions of myself. Sorry, my since I don't have an outline or anything, my brain just goes from one topic to the next and it's kind of fun that way. But I have two versions of myself. We have Lexi and we have Alexis. Lexi is me. I mean, she's a great girl. She's funny. She's having fun. She's, you know, 
going out and partying, having the time of her life. She's sleeping in sometimes. She's a human and she's a teenage girl. Well, I guess I'm not a teenager. She's a 22 year old girl just doing 22 year old girl things. And then we have Alexis. And the way I view Alexis is just kind of like my alter ego, but not like a drunk alter ego. Alexis is the best version of myself. She is the girl who's waking up at the sunrise. She's jumping in the ocean. She's chasing her dreams. She's taking her ideas and putting them on paper and making them real. She is evolving. She's journaling. She's lighting her candles at night. She's doing all the things that she dreams of doing. And she's just living as the best version of herself. So whenever I'm in like a really high phase of my life, like I'm just high on life kind of thing, that's when I think Alexis is out. And I I do feel like she's out a little bit right now just because life's been really good. And I've been feeling all sorts of good emotions that I just haven't felt in a really, really, really long time. And I'm not sure how I even got um, on the topic from... I don't know how we got to Lexi and Alexis conversation. I just don't remember a single thing that comes out of my mouth. It's like I really am freaking Dory from Nemo. I have short-term memory loss. Um, That made me cringe too. It's okay. But yeah, the moral of the story here and what I really want to just remind you of and explain to you is that there's always going to be a lot of things that go on outside of us and around us and our outside world definitely has an impact on our inside world. But ultimately, if you remember in collection two, I made that It was the crew neck that said our inner world is a reflection of our outside. Wait, our outer world is a reflection of our inner world. And that just goes to say that you have to heal yourself from within you. You can't rely on other people to validate you, to do it for you. You can't rely on success in money to do it for you. You can't rely on just other people's validation in general to do it for you. You have to validate yourself. And I don't know how many times I can even say it. I don't know. You guys are probably going to punch me in the face soon, but you got to be your own best friend and you have to learn to love yourself because if you can't love you, you are not going to allow anyone else in this lifetime to love you either. And I think that that was a huge realization I had. And that's kind of why I wanted to do the podcast episode on breaking your own heart because I had a little situation that just kind of put into perspective for me that I accept the love that I think I deserve. And since I can't really love myself yet, I won't allow anyone else to love me. And it's pretty deep and we can get into that another time. I don't really want to get into it right now just because, I don't know, it's so weird for me to spill my relationship boy drama situation tea on, I don't know, just to the internet. But I know it's valuable because we're all going through the same struggles, but we'll get to that when we get to that. That was kind of the realization that sparked all of this for me. I just kind of actually had the wake up call that I needed to change something in my life or nothing in my life was going to change. Damn, I liked that. You have to change your life. Otherwise, nothing is going to change. And it is as simple as that. So I don't even know. I started taking more time to do things for myself that I actually enjoyed. And I would wake up earlier. I've been going to the sunrise almost not every day. That is such a lie. Do not listen to me. I'm lying. I don't go to the sunrise every day, but I do try to go at least a few times a week because waking up with the sun has such an impact on my mental health and I I can't even put it into words. First of all, I'm being forced to get up early versus sleeping in until who knows what time in the afternoon. And then I'm getting the sunlight in my face and my eyes. I'm getting vitamin D the second that I wake up and it just makes me feel good. It reminds me of my blessings and it makes me grateful. And I know sometimes I'll get comments like, well, I would go to the sunrise too if I lived on the beach. You can still view the sunrise from anywhere. Just wake up and go outside and go do a polar plunge and jump in. I don't know. Whatever it is. Try to wake up earlier. Again, though, that's something that has worked for me. And that is something that makes me feel good. And that is something that is me healing myself from the inside out. For you, it might be staying up later. Maybe you're a night owl. Who knows? You just have to play around and test things out. And you might be the opposite of me, but you have to do what is going to actually make you feel good and make you feel peace in your life. And I think that another thing that's been bringing me a lot of peace in my life is I have just chosen to delete social anxiety. Sounds silly. Sounds crazy. Um, You're probably like, Lexi, you can't just delete that. That's not how it works. That's not how mental illness works. I'm like, I know I've struggled with social anxiety my whole entire life for at least as long as I can remember. You guys know the whole story with I couldn't in middle school, I couldn't get on the bus because my social anxiety made me so sick to my stomach that at one point I thought I was dying of an internal illness. I went to doctors. I did acupuncture. I did everything but therapy because we just didn't know about therapy at the time, I guess. But my anxiety was so bad 
that I just wouldn't go to school. I would sit at the bus stop and wait till my mom would pick me up and it drove her insane. And then high school came around and I couldn't do pretty much anything without my best friend by my side. If I would go to a high school party, I would have to be drinking beforehand and can't go on dates. It makes me so, so sick to my stomach that I just, I don't even have control over it. Like I get physically ill before I can do anything that will take me out of my comfort zone. And I kind of had this epiphany again after the whole breaking my own heart thing that I need to get over it. I want to see things in my life change. I want to get to a point where I can be, I don't know, not to be cheesy and like cliche, but I want to be in love one day. And if I can't go on a date with someone or I can't speak to someone, I'm not going to get there. And I want to be able to do this. And eventually I want to get to a point in my life where I want to host events and give a TED talk. And all of these things are the things that make me so anxious. And Again, I've mentioned this before too, but I have to learn how to dance with fear and you have to learn how to dance with fear. And I think that that is something that's going to bring us both peace. But let me explain to you too, what I've been doing to delete my social anxiety. I'm going to sound like a crazy person. Okay. But I got invited to go to the beach this one day with like this kid that I like, he's a good friend of mine. We've known each other for a while, went to prom with him in high school. And we just have so many things in common as far as what our dreams and goals are. So I was like, yeah. I'll go to the beach. I said yes. I literally was crapping my pants. But on my way to the beach, I just kind of told myself, I was like, listen, Lexi, you're in a video game. I'm in a simulation. And I separ- I really don't want to sound crazy, but I'm going to. I separate my mind and my body. So I just pretend that I'm controlling myself with like a remote controller and I'm watching myself. And it just takes a lot of the pressure off. Like I'm just there being myself. And I'm like, you know what? It's all a simulation. And the worst case, like this happens one time. I don't have to live it twice. I don't have to live this again. I only have to live it once. And I had such a great time. Did I still get a little bit of anxiety? Was I still freaking out a little bit? Yes, because I'm human and I'm a 22 year old girl and I'm scared of commitment and relationships and just talking to people in general. Um, But it was really good and it was really awesome. And I'm so glad that I did it. And then from the beach, I went and I met with an old high school teacher and a couple of my friends from high school too. And I just have been putting myself out there as a social butterfly and it's crazy because I don't, I didn't think that that is something that would bring me peace in my life because I'm an introvert. I can't really handle people, um, not because of the people themselves, because of my own social battery. Like I just really, really appreciate my alone time and doing things alone and I've gotten so comfortable with being alone and not necessarily being super social that like for me to step out of this comfort zone, I would think would make my life a lot less peaceful. It would make me more stressed. It would make me more overwhelmed. And don't get me wrong. There's little phases. There's little chunks of time where it does, where I'm like, what am I signing myself up for? Why would I say yes to that? That was a dumb idea. And then I realized that all it took is doing it a couple times. And I just kind of remember that practice makes perfect. And obviously I still get really anxious. But I noticed that once I took myself out of the comfort zone just a couple of times, I already feel better. Like I already feel like I can do more things and I can chase more dreams. I don't know how to explain it, but let me just give you a story. For example, I went to the beach yesterday. Wasn't on the agenda to go to the beach. I've been playing around, messing around, just having fun for the past, since before Christmas, honestly. It was the last time I feel like I did real work. So yesterday was supposed to be my real work day. I sat down at my computer and then I looked outside and it was beautiful because Florida has just been acting up lately. She's gorgeous and the water's crystal clear and it's nice outside. So knowing me, I couldn't help myself. I had to go to the beach. I was like, I'm going to go read my book on the beach for an hour because for me, that's just as productive. It might not be productive on paper, but for my mental health, that's really productive and it makes me feel good and it releases serotonin, dopamine, all those things. So I get to the beach First, I answer some emails on my phone there for like 20 minutes and then I open my book. I read about 10 pages of my book and then this girl comes up to me and she introduces herself. Her name's Jordy and we just get to talking and she is 18 years old. Two days after her high school graduation, she came here from Australia and I'm like, that is just the most incredible thing. So usually like I'm, I'll keep a conversation short just because one, I don't know how to continue it and two, people scare me. That sounds so dramatic but it's real like I'm, I'm just being real with you guys I'm scared of people sometimes but we just got to talking and our conversation was over like two hours we just talked about everything under the sun and one conversation led to another 
And by the end of it, I was just like, everything happens for a reason. There's a reason that I went to the beach and that I had this conversation and I was able to have the conversation and I enjoyed it. And I didn't leave the beach feeling overwhelmed or like lacking energy. I actually felt better and I felt peaceful. And the whole point of this story is one, start the conversation. Don't be afraid of it. And two, what I'm doing now is after I record this podcast, I'm actually going to go pick her up because she's only here for a few more days and then she's going to Israel. How cool is that? And I'm going to interview her and I'm just going to start this freaking documentary that I've been thinking about and dreaming about for the longest time. And I don't know. I just tell you all these stories to be your own personal reminder that all of these things are possible. I was chasing myself. That's what it felt like chasing after myself. It's like I could see who I wanted to be and I'm running after her, but it was like I was on a treadmill and the version of me that I wanted to be was the donut on the string and I was never going to get to it doing the things that I was doing. And I can't even pinpoint what it is that happened in the past couple of weeks that really switched everything for me. I'm trying to think of it, but I think it just came down to me realizing that I actually have to want to heal. I have to be the vibration that I want to attract. And that's another thing that I've been getting really very much back into is not necessarily spirituality, but I started opening my journal again. I wrote 10 pages about everything that I learned in 2022 and I journaled about yesterday and I wrote down all my dreams and goals and I put them in my notes and I wrote down all my resolutions and I've actually kind of been following them. Of course, there's a few things that I can't keep up with. Like I promised myself I'd do Duolingo for 10 minutes every day. I haven't been doing that. So don't destroy yourself or beat yourself up if you haven't done every single thing that you set your mind to do. That's only going to drag you down more. You're not going to feel peace when you're constantly bullying yourself. You have to give yourself grace. You have to be patient with yourself. You have to make meaning of everything that you're doing. For example, all this social butterfly stuff that I've been doing, if you would have asked a month ago me how I felt about that, she'd be like, you're not being productive. You're not focusing on work. You're not going to be successful. Your dreams aren't going to come true. And when I ask myself about that now, I've made so much meaning in being a little social butterfly. I have found so much clarity in the fact that I can be normal. I, I can't put it into words, but for the longest time, I have just struggled with the whole idea of being someone who can just go hang out with their friends or go have fun because I'm always in the back of my mind telling myself that I should be doing something else. And what I realized in the past couple weeks is that for me, the social butterfly stuff is productive because I'm finding me and I'm figuring out me and I'm laughing and I'm separating myself from work and I'm allowing myself to have different phases of life. I'm ultimately just measuring my productivity differently. And I think that we could all do that and we should all do that because it's going to help you find a lot more peace from within. And I've also gotten back into my manifesting a little bit and using the law of attraction. So in a really simple version, the law of attraction is when you act as someone I'm trying to think here how to put it into words because there's a bunch of different ways that it's explained. But to me, the way that I understand it the best is be the energy that you want to attract. If you want to be someone who wakes up early and goes to the sunrise and wakes up naturally and goes to bed early, if you want to be that person, you have to start doing it. Like it might not feel good at first. Even now, I've been going to the sunrise a couple times a week for the past few weeks and I'm still tired as hell in the morning, but let me tell you, it's gotten a lot easier and I've never once regretted waking up earlier. And I think that as I continue to build that habit, I'm going to notice that it gets easier. But along the way, I'm going to be patient with myself. Like if there's a day where I really am trying to get out of bed and I just can't do it, it's not the end of the world. Just because I didn't do something one day, it doesn't set everything else off track. Just because it happens once doesn't mean it's going to be that way forever. Another thing that has been bringing me a lot of peace in my life from the inside is letting go of other people's opinions. And obviously, I could tell you this a million times. Someone could tell me this a million times and I'd be like, well, easier said than done. I know it is. And I still feel the emotions from other people's comments. Like if someone has something to say about what I look like, what I wear, what I do with my life, like it still hits me. 
but not in the way that it used to. It's like I've put up this shield on my heart for negativity and anything that someone says, like it'll try to penetrate to my heart and then just bounce off because it's just not, it it doesn't even matter. If you guys haven't read the four agreements, strongly, strongly, strongly recommend you read that book because I need to read it again now that I think about it. But I remember reading that book and for the longest time, I just felt peace. I was like, I'm not taking anything personal. I'm doing my best and everything else in my life is just going to fall into place. And for a while it did. So I think that I should reread that book and I think that you should reread that book too. But I don't know. The next thing that's been helping me find peace within life in general, like I just feel so peaceful. I feel so okay with where I am and what's going on and... It's just such a cool feeling. So another thing that I do or have noticed that I've been doing to get to this point is that I just trust. That was my word of 2023. Literally wrote down trust. And this doesn't just mean trust the timing and trust my path. It means trusting people and trusting myself and trusting my gut and trusting that everything's going to be okay. Just trust in general. And if you haven't already, make a word for 2023. I also suggest that you start journaling. If you haven't already, close out 2022. Write a nice little entry. Doesn't have to be crazy long, but I promise once you start writing, you'll realize you have a lot more to say in your mind than you even know. But just start writing and write down everything that you learned in 2022 and everything that you want to leave in 2022. And visualize yourself doing it. Like you have to... Also put in the mental work. Like you can't just journal and expect everything to feel good. You have to put in the mental work. You have to tell yourself. You have to fake it till you make it and believe that everything you don't want to bring with you into this new year, you have to believe that you're not going to. And the same thing, vice versa. You have to believe that you are going to bring all of these things in in 2023. You have to believe that your dreams are going to come true because when you are the vibration that you want to attract, good things are going to come to you. Every time, without fail. But they're not going to if you're, if it's fake. It has to be real. You have to believe these things. You have to just be. And that's another thing. I think I talked about this on last week's episode. I don't remember. You guys know the drill. It's, it's always a blur. But I said on last week's episode that you have to remember that you're a human being and not a human doing. And yeah, when it comes to that, I think a reason that I struggled so much with finding myself again is because I was pouring everything into my work that my work got to a point where it wasn't even genuine anymore, which sounds really harsh. Like I I never was faking who I am online or like changing anything about myself to be online, but I was putting so much time into creating new things and like constantly thinking about work and constantly allowing it to overwhelm me that I didn't even have time to do the things that made me me, which when you're doing social media, it it gets tough because I'm like, okay, um, I'm spending all this time doing these things and then what do I do with it? Hold on, let let me put that into better words. I got distracted staring at something literally in the living room. When my whole life is social media and when I've built a social media platform from my life, I noticed like this feeling of emptiness when I wasn't living my life how I used to and I was living my life just to create like a successful future and putting so much pressure on the future. And I think that this is something that we all do. Obviously, we're not all doing social media, but we're always so worried about the future and the future is always going to work itself out. It never fails. It's going to take a really long time to figure out what the reason is sometimes, but Ultimately, it all falls into place. And if you spend every moment, here I go again telling you this so many times, you spend every moment thinking about the future, you're going to lose this moment. And then this time in your life is going to fade away so fast that by the time you even have time to appreciate it, the moment is going to be so far gone. Does that make sense? Work on being here and being now and understanding that you are so young and understanding that You have all of the things that you are looking for already within you. You already embody every trait trait it is that you are chasing. And it's your responsibility to dig deep enough within you to find those things. And I pinky promise you that once you find them, you will notice that your life feels different. You feel this different kind of contentment, this different kind of peace, 
and everything around you seems to just flow. But in order to get to that point, first of all, you have to want to find the peace. You have to want to heal. You have to immerse yourself. You have to put the work in. Things aren't going to happen overnight and they're not just going to happen to you. You have to work for them. You have to work for this peace, but not by chasing things outside or around you or chasing a successful future or chasing someone who fills a void. And I kind of went over this all before, but you have to do it by working for yourself and being your own teammate and encouraging yourself to keep going and to keep pushing and reminding yourself constantly that it does get better. And I can be the personal experience to tell you that. It does get better and it will get better. And all this to say, I also have gotten to a point, and I think that this is something that's helped me find this piece too, is where I understand right now that I am like kind of on a high and that I feel really good and that life is probably going to get busy again at some point and I'm probably going to get overwhelmed and my mental health is going to struggle again. But I'm okay with that. I'm not stressing myself out by thinking about it. I'm just appreciating the fact that I get to be here right now and when I have to go through it again, I'll go through it again. Because life is a wave. It's like a circle. It's a hamster wheel, whatever you want to call it. The emotion that you feel right now isn't the emotion that's going to last forever. Whether that's joy or sadness or anger, no feeling is final. You are going to get past this or this is going to change. But just enjoy where you are. And and you will find more peace. And I think it can be that simple. And I think I want it to be that simple. So that's what I'm going to leave you guys with today. I know I was a little bit repetitive. I don't have things in front of me that I'm reading. So doing the best I can here. But I really love you guys. And I know this week's episode was kind of short. But please DM me what you want to hear on the podcast. And who you want to hear on the podcast. And oh, if you are listening, listen to how exciting this is. I This is another reason I know that I found so much peace in my life. Because... I'm having ideas like this and I'm actually making them happen. For the past few months, I was having tons of ideas, zero motivation to make them a real thing. But I am, you know, I've been volunteering at the dog shelter. If you listen to other episodes, I've talked about that a lot. That's a huge thing that has brought me so much contentment in my, or fulfillment in my life. Like it's so rewarding. Besides the point, I love my animals. I love my puppies. I love that dog shelter more than anything. And I go every single day at least for an hour, if I can. Some days I have to miss, but we're human. And I want to host an event, uh, not necessarily like a moments event, but maybe we could tie the podcast into it somehow where we have it at Tri-County and like they have this huge lot out back and we'll hang out with the puppies and we'll, I don't know, just have fun, raise money, do an auction or something, sell dog treats. And I also am gonna work with the nonprofit Three Heartstrings that I are like half the bracelets that I ever wear. And we're gonna make a bracelet that all the money raised from the bracelet will go towards Tri-County as well. So if you can't come to the event in person, you can support online and you get a bracelet to wear, which I just think is going to be really, really freaking awesome. And I can't stop thinking about it. And I'm going with my friend Nada to a coffee shop on Friday and we're going to plan it out. And she's very organized. I'm not. Obviously, we know this about me. So we're going to be like the dream team and we're going to plan the event and it's going to be so freaking awesome. And I can't wait for it. So if you're in South Florida, uh, I'm thinking end of February not totally sure yet we'll see what happens and there was one more thing that I wanted to tell you oh yes there is a little bit of moments merch left from collection two and collection three is going to come out on February 22nd ideally if we can make it happen that's the goal but sometimes there's technical difficulties I really want to do it on angel numbers but there's a few pieces left from collection two and these pieces will never be in stock ever again I know I said that last time but then my mom was like oh let's do a black friday sale and I was like eh I don't know about all that. She made me do it. And I'm glad I did because I love seeing you guys in moments collections. But there's a few pieces left. If you want to go shop them, they are going to go on sale, I think, pretty soon. But yeah, if you want to shop, go shop. We're going to do really cool things, really awesome things in this next year. But we're also going to take it easy on ourselves. And I appreciate you guys for sticking around even through all of my ups and downs and my ebbs and flows and just joining along on the wave of life because we're all feeling all the same things. And If there's anything I want to do in this lifetime, it's to just help you understand that it's all going to be okay and that everything that you're feeling is normal. And of course, you're never alone. And I'm here to be your best friend. I love you guys. I couldn't do any of this without you. And I'll talk to you next Monday. Bye-bye.